So, the question for tonight is, do you hand crank your machine or your bag when you are sewing curves? You know, I don't care how good I think I get when I am working on tight curves. I'm hand cranking that baby. I don't care. This is my Yamata 1341. My hand crank is over here on the side and I just pull it like this when I want to make sure that my stitch is on point when I'm working with a curve. So when I lift up, cause you know on industrial, you can use your leg to lift up your feet. That's how you lift your feet on the industrial. So you can have both your your hands free, which is really convenient. Yeah, so I position it. And I hand crank that baby, you know, because I want my stitch to look good. I don't care. Call me an amateur, but I bet my stitches are going to look good. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing on this beautiful... What's today? Friday? Yeah, Friday. Yesterday was Thursday. So today is... No. Yeah. No, yesterday wasn't Thursday. Yesterday, yesterday was Thursday. No, yesterday was Tuesday. No, girl. Yesterday, yesterday was Thursday. No. Yes. I'm making a strike. Yeah, so... That's my, uh... That's my topic for tonight. Are you gonna risk it all just to go a little fast? Or are you gonna hand crank this baby? Oh, this. How cute is this piece? So I'm about to be making the Birkin, Birkin <laughs> inspired bag by Toby Style. And so this is the little piece that goes on the front. I'm actually really excited about that bag. And now I'm about to work on the flap pieces. You know what? I should put my edge on. I already started. Now I just gotta pay attention. <laughs> I started using all these gadgets and stuff. I'm getting lazy. Yeah, so I am working on the Birkin inspired bag by Toby Styles. Also, I can't stand when my thread doesn't end exactly where I want it to. <laughs> so I have to go and change my stitch to the smallest stitch I can get it just for that one final stitch. I think I'm OCD when it comes to sewing. Nothing else. Not when it comes to cleaning or anything else. But when it comes to sewing, baby, I need everything to be perfect. But yeah, so this bag is so cute. I wanted to make it, but it does have a lot of prep work. And I only have one day to get this bag sewn and the tutorial done. So tonight is me doing the prep work. I have to do some edge paint. So therefore, I needed to get these little pieces done so that I can edge paint it and get it, let it dry and then... Um, and then I'll be able to get started sewing tomorrow morning. 
I will sew, sew through the whole day and then I'll um, edit the whole night. <laughs> oh gosh. I've just been so busy lately. This is the fastest I can get to it. She has a package deal coming out right now. I don't know if you've heard about it. Or you can buy like a, a bundle of her patterns at a discounted price. And this is one of the bags in that bundle. And I am a part of her affiliate program. So if you use the link that I provide for the tutorial on this, I will get a little bit of a kickback. So um, if you like this bag or the tutorial when I put it out, definitely would appreciate if you use my link. that too do you hand crank the very tip if the thread isn't exactly the right length mm -hmm. I really am excited about this bag I get to use some cool hardware that I've been wanting to use since I saw it. So these are the little pieces that's gonna go around the sides of the bag to the front. And I'm about to edge paint this and this. So I think that's all I need to edge paint. Oh no, I think I need to put some holes in the bag as well. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, I need to put some holes in the bag that the belt is going to go through. Now, I don't have the exact piece, the size that she has, but I do have this die that was part of um, a box that I got from Amazon. And it's pretty close to the size, so I'm going to use this. I've made my marks on the back already, so now I'm just going to get them pounded in really quick. I remember before I found out about dyes, I used to cut stuff like this out and it used to be so hard. And one day somebody was like, you can buy dyes for that. And it really just like changed my life. Let's see, oh, I did not mark these yet. Bridge hole. Okay, this front panel says that it's the bridge hole, but the piece that goes there is a little bit longer than the piece that I have right here, so 
I don't know if I'm going to, um, I guess I'll use the same piece, the same die to make that hole, but I'll just scoot it up to modify it to get it a little bit longer, I guess. I guess I'll grab the piece to see how big it needs to be. So this piece is going to be attached to the actual bag. Okay, like that. And then it's going to go through the flap and stick out to hold that this piece. So I need to make it a little bit wider. Longer, I mean, because my piece is a little bit longer. I just don't want to mess up because I don't have any more of this crop. <laughs> so I got to get it right. Okay, next I want to get my lock installed. This lock is so cool. So it looks like this is going to be on here. And then the other piece is going to be on the main panel. And the other piece looks like this. And it turns this part. So it comes through this lock and you turn it to lock it. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so I've marked on here from the pattern piece and now I am going to just take these screws off on the back. Baby, stop, please. All right. And then I'm going to use this piece to get it traced out so I can cut the die out. Let me go ahead and cut this little square out so that I can make sure I'm installing it straight. So one thing I don't want is a crooked ass lock in the front of my bag, right? I hate when I see that. Like you didn't see that lock was lopsided, girl. You saw that was lopsided. I used to rush and just put stuff on and. I had lopsided stuff too, and I finally got to a point where to say, Ray, that extra two minutes it takes to do it right, get the correct measurement or whatever you need to do extra, isn't it worth not being finished and looking at your bag and it have a cricket lock, lock on the front of it? And I decided, yes. <laughs> so now I just take the time to do it correctly. All right. So now I'm going to take this lock, the back piece, and place it right there and just center it around the lines that I just drew and make a new line. And also, I'm going to draw those two little circles around it. And now I'm going to punch out that square. I'm going to connect those dots to the square. Actually, I'm just going to poke two holes on the side. I'm not going to connect it. All right, and now I need to find a die that is the size of that. It's pretty tiny. So I hope I can find one. Yeah, I think that'll work. Booyah. Booyah. Booyah means you. Yeah. It means yeah, I found it. All right, I'm about to hammer, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Tell me when you're going to knock so I can cover my ear. That's why I told you, sweetie. I'm about to do it again. All right. I'm gonna do it one more time, baby. Mm. 
Mm. Again. <laughs> Sorry. I gotta do it here. All right, and I'm gonna make a hole for those side pieces. It's kind of peaceful doing this tonight and not just uh, going at it from the get. It's kind of relaxing. I'm not rushing. Even though it's 12 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I can't go to sleep anyway because I'm uploading my tutorial for Shambhala that releases tomorrow. And it takes like hours and hours to upload. So I got to stay up till it finishes so that I can then upload it to YouTube, which also takes a while. And then I can get that link sent to her because I need it to be sent ready before the morning when she releases it, you know. So, anyway, my point is, I'm going to be up for a while anyway, so I figured, why not get started with the prep work on this bag? I have a punch for this. Why am I doing this? See, when I get when it gets late, I start doing silly stuff. I have a little die that I could have done that with. All right. Um, okay, now let's see if I did it right. Usually, I have to go back a couple of times to... Adjust the holes. Okay, this is the front. This is the back. Let's get that in. Get that in. This is the front. Okay, I'm tripping. Mm -hmm. And I did interface this. Piece. Get in there. There you go. I interfaced both of these pieces. I didn't stabilize it. I wanted to stabilize it, but it, it gets turned through a little, a very little zipper pocket inside. And so I wasn't able to uh, stabilize it the way I wanted to. I think what I really want to do is um do a dropping lining, but the the pattern calls for I'm gonna do it the way the pattern calls for because it's my first time doing it I think I'm gonna go back later and make it a drop in lining I gotta do this again baby I gotta hit it again okay well what if I find my guy? How do I misplace stuff so quickly? It's kind of amazing. Okay, I'm about to hammer. Oh, I found it, of course. As soon as I do that. All right, there we go. There we go, there we go. All right, get this back put on. Bam. This little set that I'm doing right now, this lock, all the, it's a set. And all, I think it's an eight piece set and it's everything you need to make a bag like this or a bag similar to this. I do have it available on my website. Okay, I'm not gonna tighten it all the way because I wanna check and see if it's a little crooked and it is a little crooked. How did that happen? What in the world? I'm not happy. Let's see if I can shift this down a little bit. My God, that's very crooked. What in the world? I 
can't. So this is what the entire set looks like. Um, so excited. Oh no, I lost one of my, uh, I think my daughter had it. What is she? Oh gosh, she didn't look to bed. Oh, here it is on the floor. She dropped it. Oh God. Oh, okay. Got it. Oh. Yeah, so this is the first piece, the lock, that I've already put on. This is the piece that is going to come in from behind that lock. And then you can lock it by turning it. And then these two pieces... Oh, wow. I thought that they slid. I thought that this slid in, but you actually unscrew it. Okay. That's cool. You actually unscrew it and puncture a hole in here. and then you install it. Okay, that's cool. So you just need to make sure that you cover up the tip of that. Okay, okay, okay. That's kind of dope. And then you'll cut out that hole in the middle because once you have this installed, this will also slide over this. So it's gonna come through here, and then you can slide this over as well, and then turn the lock, and that's how you keep it closed. And there's two of these to go from each corner. Pretty excited about this. Pretty excited. Okay, so I'm gonna get this back in so that I can start my edge coat. I hate uploading videos. It's been uploading for probably about two hours now. And it initially it told me it would take an hour and 20 minutes to upload. I just went and checked. It says I still have an hour and 15 minutes left. So that means I really have about two hours, over two hours, so. About four and a half hours waiting for this dang video to upload. I don't know if it's my computer. Like, I need to clean my computer. But everybody I talk to has the same problem. So that makes me believe it's not my computer. All the other people who do tutorials say they have the same issue. Sometimes it takes days. I've had it take days before. Like 10 hours to upload. Okay. Um, I'm going to start edge coating. I'm going to be using Mojo Sews because I absolutely love her um, edge painting. So she has a base coat. I'm going to be using black as my color. And then she also has a top coat. I love the consistency of it. It's It gives really good coverage. I don't know. It just goes on really well. So when I edge coat now, I feel like it's better if I have... Let me see. I used to hold it with the front, the exterior of the bag facing me, but I find that I do more dragging and getting color on my bag when I do that. So now I always make sure that the back is facing me when I start edge coating. And that way, if there is a little bit of extra going on, it goes onto the back of the bag instead of the front. I'll probably do two coats of the base and follow up with two coats of the black color. Oh, 
whenever I have to edge coat or whenever you edge coat, you just have to tell yourself, you know, it is what it is. It's about to be a second. I always like to go flip it over and look at the front just to make sure nothing got over because if you let it dry, it's a wrap. So you want to catch it as soon as possible so that you don't have a problem. The first coat always takes a little while, but the second one gets easier because it, once you have that first coat down, for whatever reason, the second one just kind of sticks to it. It just kind of wants to stay where the other one is, kind of like water. Once water makes its, uh, once you, you know, water makes a trail, it's going to follow along that trail. That's kind of how I feel it is with edge coat. Yeah, if you're looking for an edge coat, Mojo Sews is definitely at the top of the list. You should give them a try. And it's a small business. I'm always trying to support the small businesses as best I can. We out here hustling, you know? Most of us have young children, other jobs. But we do it for the love of the for just the love of the process, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I'm about to stop the video because surely nobody wants to watch me paint this. Although, although I do get people ask me like, why don't you show it? That's why I'm trying to show it a little bit. But I don't want to bore anybody to death for sure. And this little roller came from Mojo Sews as well. Fantastic at applying this. And you notice I did not edge coat the very top because the very top is going to be concealed in the seam, so. No need to do that. Okay, that wasn't too bad, was it? Yes. <laughs> Who was that? All right. I'm going to turn this off because I know you can't possibly care about this. Oh, yeah, this is actually a part of the set, too. It had um, fallen out of the paper. But, yeah, this uh, goes with that little... Keychain, I mean, um, lock, whatever. How cool is that? <laughs> it unlocks it. So cool. 
All right, and I'm also going to do a quick little bit of edge coat on these circles that we cut out. Well, I guess I cut them out, not we. <laughs> There we go. I think that's it. Uh, we have holes on the top, right? I did not do my holes on the top. I'm being a little messy with this because I just can't. I'll just wipe it off. Not a big deal. As long as you wipe it off quickly, you're good. All right, that's all the holes. I'm gonna let these dry for a couple of minutes and then I'll do another coat. All right, we've also got these handles that need to be edge painted. So I'm gonna do these. I'll probably just do one coat of the edge paint on these because I'm not really too concerned about them. I actually don't even really need any edge coat because the side of this vinyl is black. I mean, the side of the vinyl is uh, blue. I only really like the edge coat when the side of the vinyl, vinyl shows white, or if I'm doing layers like this, then yeah. But um, I don't even think I'm gonna interface this. I think this would be fine. I mean, I don't think I need to edge coat it. Oops, excuse me. No, that's good. Okay. Save myself the trouble, honey. Let me look at it and see. If there's any white showing. No, I think it's fine. If I need to apply edge coat, I'll do it after I've um, assembled it. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go with the second um, layer of the base coat.
Like I said, the second coat goes on a lot easier. A lot faster. But don't get lazy. You still have to check the front. I'm talking to myself. I get lazy. <laughs> Now, I'm probably only going to do two coats, but if you want that really good edge coat look that you see when people take the time to do it, then that's how you get it. You would go back and do another coat, and you also, you see how there's a little bit of unevenness? If you really, really, really want to do it correctly, you could go back and sand down after you've done about three coats. And you've got that thickness that looks really good. But you've also got a little bit of, you see the little ridges? You can um, sand it down to get it nice and smooth. Um, I, I don't do all that. I just, I can't be bothered. But you'll find some videos on YouTube if you want to look into that. That will give you a little bit more detail on doing that. I haven't been checking my underside very much just because my color that I'm going to be using to paint is black and that is black. So if it goes over a little bit, I'm not too concerned about it. That's one thing when it comes to edge coating, I always try to do is use edge coat that's the same as close as possible to my material because it's just going to save you a hassle of... If anything goes over the edge a little bit. I forgot which end I started from. <laughs> Gee Louise, I really did. Uh, I think I need to go this way. Yeah. It's one o'clock in the morning, y'all. I'm tired. I'm up for y'all. Make sure that video uploads. So annoying. I'm going to watch a YouTube video to see if I can maybe clean my computer or something to make it. I don't know if that has anything at all to do with it. Like I said, I don't think it does just because everybody says it happens to them. So I think it's just the process. All right, second coat is done. All right, I've done two coats. And now I'm gonna move on to my actual color. I say wait about 15 minutes between each coat. Longer if you, if you have the time. But since I'm going to be letting this dry overnight, I'm not too concerned. I think I should shake it up a little bit. There we go. There we go. See how easily that glides on?
Yes. Looks so good, right? All right, um, let's see. See how it just glides on there? Once you get to this stage, it it's way easier than the um the base coat You don't want to use too thin of an amount because you will be able to see through it. And you also don't want to use too much because it'll drip. The more you, you do edge painting, you'll get the feel of it. It's hard to explain, but you'll, you'll feel it. All right, I'm going to turn this off because I'm wasting my battery. I'm just doing the same thing. <laughs> okay, now I could wait longer to put this second coat, but I just can't. It's really, really late. Um, so I'm going to add it, and then I'm going to go to bed. So it'll be fine, even though it's not quite ready, because I, I'm going to leave it alone for the next, you know, five, six hours. I think it's okay. So this is the second coat.
I'm not sure if that light made it better or worse. I'm hoping better. I can't really tell. As you can see, by the time you're getting to this, you know, second coat of paint, it's gliding on super, super easy. At this point, I'm being pretty generous with the amount that I'm applying. Because, like I said before, it just kind of wants to follow the path that it's on. So I'm a little bit more comfortable with applying more. As opposed to the first couple of times. You really have to watch it. See how easy it's going on? Looks really good. I'm gonna hang this out to dry. <laughs> gonna lay it on top of here. There we go. Good night. <laughs>